welcome to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories, shall we? The first story is called, Bosses Want to Blame Me. I knew this would happen and I've been awaiting this day. When I started working here, the owners were working in the field every day. One of my goals for them was to make it so they don't have to. Unfortunately, they have not been training their replacements properly, so they are still having to work in the field quite often. They decided a few weeks ago that they are simply done working in the field and they do not want to be scheduled in the field without their permission. I scheduled them one day in the field and one of the owners came unglued. Lesson learned. It's not realistic for them to be in the office all the time, because they didn't give anyone the skills to do what they do. So I took it to the nth degree. I had to schedule a specialized project, so I asked the owner to look at it. He stood at my desk, looked at the project and the schedule and told me to schedule it for today at 1 pm. So I did. He said to put the other owner on it and before doing so I called the other owner to ask him. I'm complying to a T. Today I got back to the office at 12.30 to two angry owners. They ripped me up one side and down the other, in part for scheduling them and in part for not allowing enough time to finish the job. I smiled and I listened. I'm sure my smile annoyed them. When they finished their rant, I explained that boss 2 stood right by my desk and told me exactly when to schedule it, for how long and to put boss 1 on the job with him. And that I called boss 1 before I did it to make sure it was ok. And they both stopped talking because they actually remembered me doing that. It felt good to show them that even with total compliance they are still going to jump to conclusion so they can blame someone else when they aren't happy. The next story is called No Overtime Compensation. Several years ago I worked at an organization where I managed several projects. For most of these projects I had a team to help meet deadlines. My time was split up between these projects and percentages that dictated how much time I could work on each. On one of these projects I was alone and was allotted 20% of my work week to work on it. That means 8 hours. I liked this project and my contract had from the contracting organization, so I often worked much more than the 8 hours. Pretty often, it was around 20 to 30 hours extra a week for this project. Yes, I asked for help and yes, I asked for more time on the project. Both requests were denied as we didn't have the people for it or the money. And no, I was never paid overtime. Seeing as I was working so many extra hours, often very late into the night, I occasionally asked my manager if I could come in a few hours late. At first, this request was accepted and I would come in late and leave late. After the sixth or seventh time, my request started to get declined with my manager saying, they don't need the deliverable at 4am, so why are you working that late? About a month after the requests were first denied, my mental health started to worsen as I was barely sleeping. So I decided to listen to my manager. I stopped working extra and stopped working until the early morning on all projects. I carefully marked down the times that I spent on each project on an excel sheet and made sure to never go over my allotted hours. I came in at 8am and left at 4pm. I didn't ask for my phone or work remotely after 4pm. I worked 8 hours a week on my individual project and as expected, the next deliverable was missed. Then the following one was missed and a meeting was held between the contract head at the contracting organization, my boss and my boss's boss. Needless to say, the contract head was angry about how much time I was allotted onto the project. This was discussed internally without my say because my bosses think they know exactly how much time I need for the project. They requested for me to have more time on the project. So my bosses raised my hours to 16 a week and continued to decline my request to have somebody else work on it with me. And with that, I put in my two weeks at the end of that week. The fallout. I trained a buddy on the project during those two weeks. There was no way that he could learn all of the small details that I learned over the past couple of years and the time I had left there. I apologized to him and he understood and told me not to worry. A month after I had left, the contract was cancelled as my buddy and my boss tried to meet the deadlines but were not able to. I now work at a much better company, where I've only worked extra if my manager requests it. The 
the last story is called Don't try to throw your stuff under the bus. Whilst I was at university, I worked in our students hall. It was basically a two-story bar that was subsidized by the government. Because of the subsidy, it was the cheapest place in town. So we would get a couple of locals to come in. To prevent this, we were supposed to check that everyone had a student ID. But no one minded as the locals were usually polite and handled their booths better than most of the students. My manager was a local himself. He would encourage locals to come and would either discourage ID checks or simply not inform new staff of the situation. He would often steal from the bar and would give free drinks to his mates. One night he had a bunch of his buddies in town come in and have a drinking session at the bar's expense till way past closing and beyond our license. This resulted in the police being called for a noise complaint and his boss, the hall's head, finding out. To cover himself, he claimed that the group were locals that we, the bar staff, had happily allowed to stay. And then he fudged the accounting for the night to make up for the free drinks. Because of this, he himself demanded we check every student ID and the head took away some of our employee perks. The Sunday after this all went down, the pool tournament guys come in. These guys rotate which bar they go to every week, between a list of maybe six that have enough pool tables and lounge space. I personally had served them a half dozen times. They make their way over to the bar and the first guy is well into his 40s. I say, hey man, before I can serve you, I have to see your student ID. He chuckled and said something along the lines of, do I look like a student? And then he proceeded to order. Look, I'm sorry, but I've been told that if you haven't got a student ID, I can't serve you. He started to realize I wasn't just messing with him and looked to the other member of staff who reiterated the point. Are you serious? We've been coming here for years. Yeah, sorry, our manager is cracking down on the only student rule. I can grab my supervisor for you if you want. My supervisor was also a student and explained the situation. He said he was sorry for the inconvenience and that if they had any complaints to call the head, my manager's boss. He even gave out a couple of his cards that were in the office. The poor guys left, which meant no one was really in the building, so we ended up closing early. Next morning, I awoke to my manager screaming down the phone at me. But it was my day off, so I hung up and didn't go to work as a customer till past noon. When I did, my co-workers couldn't wait to tell me what had happened. My manager had come in and had a shouting match with my supervisor in front of everyone grabbing a morning coffee. The head had indeed received some complaints and scheduled a meeting with the manager that morning. Not wanting to face it alone, he took my supervisor with him. I imagine he intended to throw him under the bus as much as possible. The head was mad because all these 40 something men had called to complain on his personal number on a Sunday. And because these 40 something men by their own admission had been coming for years at the invite of the manager whom they knew well. My manager tried to save face and claimed they were associated with the university that they were in fact lecturers. That it was a bar staff failing to check for student ID all this time. And then he turned on my supervisor, saying he'd given them a bad reputation, cost them money by turning them away and closing early as well as laying bare every other mistake he had ever made. My supervisor explained that it was never explained to the staff that customers had to be students. That the manager actively encouraged locals to come in and that even lecturers get a former student ID. He explained to the head about the manager's drinking with his mates and the dodgy accounting he'd do. This led to the CCTV being checked. When the head saw that it was, in fact, the manager and his mates and that the bar staff rarely put anything through the tills at his request, suspended him on the spot. He then said the accounts would need to be audited and that he would likely be terminated and even prosecuted. After a surreal couple of weeks, we got our perks back. They hired a new manager and eventually they installed locks on the doors that could only be opened with a student ID. No idea what happened to the old manager, but by no means a loss. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and please leave a comment with your favorite subreddit for future video ideas. Have a great day. Bye bye.